All right. So composition wise, um, this is exactly the same composition that we have seen Fnatic play before, right? I think so. Wait. Is it? Let me just check. Because I did the Fnatic versus Sentinels. Wow. You guys are watching ad of an ad? All right, let's... Uh... Uh, yeah, exactly the same. Okay. So this is exactly the same composition that we had been uh, vote reviewing yesterday. Uh, and now we're going to be doing this one. So let's see how different they, differently they play against Furia because of the composition that they have. Because this is not a normal composition that you typically see. Um, and there has to be some some reason for it, right? Because otherwise, why, why on earth would you choose Viper and Harbor uh, in the same composition? And uh, you guys know I tried playing Viper in, uh, on Haven myself a lot. And I always say that you cannot really play Viper on this map unless someone else plays a main controller, right? You're just like a supplementary controller. Uh, that's why the reason it does, there's the Harbor here, right? But in general, Viper is pretty damn good on almost every map when she was not nerfed. Now it's like, mm, I don't know, man. Like, uh, the fuel management is so tricky, and you cannot really help the AB if you need the smoke on C, and then if you pop both at the same time, then it doesn't last. So it's like, not a fan, personally, right now, of Viper in general, because of those nerves, you know? So, um, let's see. So, first round, we have... Uh, when you take a look at the minimap right now, you can see that the Viper is, if I'm not mistaken, on defense... I think every single map, they did a they did the wall like this, and the thing is, when you do a wall like that, it creates a small pocket that uh, it's kind of weird that they they actually create the wall um, in front of B side. Like if I'm not mistaken, he uh, what? Why is it mo not moving? Oh, I'm in the never mind. I think he's creating the wall like from behind side, like this. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It's very weird. Because. I don't like that personally. Like the thing is. Look. Look how. How weird. This wall looks. We're gonna pay attention. When they're gonna be going towards B side. Because it creates like this weird. Weird gaps. And it also creates this weird pocket. On A side here. And I remember that vividly. That Fury got killers from this spot. Right here. Which makes no sense. Because what happens is that if you make a wall like this, with the pocket on the left side, if you ever played against the Viper on Haven, and maybe Fnatic didn't, you should know that it's walled like that, then you're going to have this pocket. So you get a free check on this angle. So you should never be killed from here unless, you know, you're just out-aimed. Right? But you get the free check on this corner without being spotted from side so it literally kind of helps you a little bit um but uh, like what i always what I, what I was always doing uh on viper on this map is i was putting it a little bit more to the side so when the when the uh, when the game when the game starts i was just doing it from um the actual other side so i was starting it from a side by standing over here and creating the wall towards B. Because what it does achieve, right, when you do it like this, it negates the, the pocket, right? So there's no pocket right here in this space. And also there's no gap in B side. Because it's literally in the doorway. The only problem is, if you do that, you need to start an A and then run to C. And I can't, if I remember correctly, you're going to be almost, almost out of time to make any lineups on on C when you want to do it properly. So that's the problem. If you if you play on C, you're not able to just go back in time and do like a one-way properly from platform. You will be basically playing from CT every single time. But yeah. Minu action Vipers was something that I sacrificed a lot of time for. Let's see. Uh, nah, fuck it. Didn't need to activate the wall. See, see the, how the wall looks? It's exactly how I explained. See this gap there? See this gap over here? Like, there's, there's empty space here. So it creates a little bit of, uh, of a pocket. You know? 
But um, this this um, Astro Smoke is something that we have seen already Fnatic do on the B side. And uh, it seems like um, Furia didn't bite at all into that fake push on B. Good for them. And unfortunately, Fnatic did the uh, one of my most hated things in Valorant, which is pushing through short or hookah, you know, with the spike or double dose. Like, if I ever play the game, or I would be coaching a team, I would always advise to not go with the spike through those angles. Like, or for hookah on bind. You don't want to go through, through double doors. You don't want to go through short. You don't want to go through hookah. Because in those areas, it's insanely rough to re, re... Like, just pick up back the spike when it's dropped there. You always want to be in positions where it's easier to recover. And Habo, Habo is doing a um, the Habo wall is being done from B. Right? Am I seeing it correctly? He's using a wall from A link at the beginning. What a what a weird wall. Like it doesn't really do much. And it's also inside. I don't get it. it. It's so... It's so weird. Wait, let me just change the transition because we're going to be swapping a lot. Look. I don't like this at all. Wait, why is this... Oh, fuck me, man. Here we go. Much better. Okay, so... What I really dislike here is that this, this harbor wall is inside of the of the site here see this it's inside of the site instead of outside of the site and then the next part of the hard hub wall is inside of the double doors instead of being outside of the double doors i like let's we're gonna be paying attention to this but that's if this is done on purpose then it's like literally can fuck over the defender because he was not going to be aware that someone already crossed them. It's like they're leaking smokes on sites. So, I really dislike this. But we'll see. We'll see if, if in the future rounds he will do it the same way. Because that's, that's an aspect of Habo that is not literally kind of... is literally easily avoidable, but every other controller is that you have certainty where you're putting your smokes and shit, right? In Omen, in Brimstone, in Astra... To in Viper, to some degree as well, the only the smoke can be misplaced, you know? But if you know what you're doing, it's not going to be misplaced. But with Harbor, the, the wall is, like, so easily fucked up because it's, it requires dexterity and full attention. So it's easy to fuck up things. Stun and pull at the same time. And look at New Zara just getting demolished. Like, it's such a good combo. The Breach, Breach Astra is, like, insane for that stuff. I, I think Bala is very confused. Because this was Cascade. <laughs> this wasn't the wall. <laughs> that, that was, this was just a Cascade that he literally stopped in front of him. <laughs> I think he's very confused. And I have to say, I am not sure. For most of the comps, sometimes we see the harbor on Icebox, on Pearl. We saw it a lot through, our, uh, through the... They did your smoke? What my smoke? For this. Yeah. Now this comp, this, this is, is different. <laughs> do you nips? You don't prepare for something like this. I mean, how do you? Yeah, and, and right away you saw the value of that. To overlap the Viper wall and... Operator on a bonus round. That's pretty risky. Let's see if it pays off. It's really risky. Same Viper setup. The orb is being put on long C, right? Yeah. 
pops not to take the space, but it's there. I am looking at some of the stars that poster is preactively. The smoggy explains for A. Wait, already? Wait, what for A? Hello, Abraxas. Maybe more prepared than I think. Hey, Gucci. Flash over the top. Does Again, he does exactly the same harbor wall. Look. Yeah, not a fan of this at all. Not a fan of this at all. Like this is this is really really bad. Like this is really 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 bad. Unless the killjoy is literally like yo, do baiting for me. Like do the wall so they kind of walk up. Because I'm gonna be better than them mechanically, and I'll just kill him. But I really dislike this. I really 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 dislike this. Last round for A smoke smoke that I explained? Wait. I need to check. Ah, the one on uh, yeah, yeah yeah the one yeah, but it's still like it, it's not the smoke that I exactly propose. It's it's not exactly this the smoke that I propose. Like just to explain you briefly, like the smoke that I always was uh advising to do is a smoke like this. Not smoke like this, but a smoke like this. Because it allows you to peek into short, left, right, without being spotted. Like, it's exactly the same purpose, but it gives you more avenue to enter onto short. You know? That's something that, uh, that I do think it's, it's not min-maxed. This is not min-maxed by, by Boaster here. It's not, a it's not a big thing, but I really like the fact that Fnatic is actually using a smoke like this, because it, it does create a better purpose than what the, the shit that people typically are doing. Oh wait, we already watched this. Really not a fan of the Sahabu wall. So, Kali literally holds it like she, like he expects that someone walks out, and then they have the one way. It has no, nah. This is this is really counterproductive. Like with this one way being up, there's no way anyone would have gone onto the wall. So this is really counterproductive. But you can see like how the wall um, goes hand by hand with the with the harbor, so they like interchange. Like, they are on a cooldown balance, I would say, right? Whenever the Viper Wall is down, the Harbor Wall picks it up. Whenever the Fuel is down, uh, I mean, sorry, whenever the Fuel is down, the Harbor picks it up. When the Harbor is down on the cooldown, then, yeah, then the Fuel goes up. That was a double, though, so... Nice. That's about it. Oh my god. Did you post on Twitter about the photo view? Ah, oh, actually I did not. Let's post it. What's Furia's? Furia USA? That's the account? I guess. What? Blocking only something that's smart. Plus, a little bit weird here. Four Fury, a and only a sheriff and light armor. Plus, his utility. And he wants to go aggressive down mid with this cascade. 
it's definitely something that's super good. Most of the smokes in the game take a second to land. That one's immediately blocking your position. Yeah, the cascade is good for taking space. That's for sure. Different smoke from Bosa this time. You know, we've had so many conversations I, um, I really dislike the fact, though, that... Uh, the defenders didn't align the buys, right? Because of the operator. Like, they could have had five rifles. Could have had five rifles. He heard it. He 100% heard Astra going into the menu and, like, tapping things and shit. So, this was a big problem. This was a big problem for Bolster. See, see this? This is exactly what I explained. Like... Chronic was just very uncertain of what to do here because he was like, wait, 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 there's a pocket here. But he realized too late, so he went very lazy. You see this? How he, how he goes into straight line? Like, he's not prepared to shoot the person here because he's not accustomed to this to this situation before. So his peak is lazy and not prepared. So he gets a one-tap on Mazin. But in in practice... If you ever had been in this situation before, right, or if you're, like, really paying attention to what is happening in the game, then Mazin should be always at a disadvantage, because he can be checked by the attacker, by the, by Chronicle here, without being, like, spotted from a side. So Chronicle should always have, like, a swing and prep pre-fire, you know, being prepped to fight with the person in that corner. I guess Chronicle wanted to peak farther, but it's one way by that. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't. It doesn't matter if it's like close. The, the one way from from Derka only mattered for um, the position where he get peaked from. Like okay, it's fine. There's a one way here. So they. So you have to peak in this area over here. You can still peak the same way. It's just gonna be closer rather than further away. It doesn't really change anything. You know, it's just a a really weird. Lazy, lazy thing to check, you know, and that's it. What can you do? Fury with a hot start out of the gates. The thing is that he can get in that pocket to, after the entry jet check, checks it. It doesn't matter. Like they already died to someone from that angle round before, you know. This reliance on Haven right now feeling like a bit. Enemies can hear Astro form. Yes. Leading into this game, Furia is super prepped, ultra prepped. And with Dijus in the, the way that he's so aggressive, I don't even really think that this is going to be a problem for them on the attack side either. I like this from Mini. Yeah, I do too, actually. Yep. Crowd giving it to him, but I think this is really, really important to get on the same page immediately. And, yeah, and settle, right? Like just. Three of them have gone, and we have seen two different. The rest are finding from guys in rounds where you want to default. Same setup by by Furia. Weird buy, but by Fnatic because of the two low buy guns on Alpha and Bosta. That Viper smoke is absolutely awful. Holy shit, I dislike it so much. Like, X XQC here didn't even wait for the barrier to drop to, to throw his smoke. But it doesn't really matter. But it, this smoke is just so bad and leaks on the side so much, man. How far can they hear though? Same as the omen smoke, 40 meters. I'll be honest with you, I didn't check the distance. Ah, oh, right, this is this round. Wait, wait, wait. This is like, this is so well played by Fnatic and so horribly played by Furia. It's actually unreal. So let's break it down. It's a 2v4, right? 2v5, actually. A 2v5. They are boxed in on long. They know they were on long. Look at Habo now being over aggressive. Like, there's no reason for him to push there. And he gets punished. Like, Mazin gets automatically punished. And this is one of the main reasons 
why situations like that can even be played out. Because if the player that is flanking right here, like he doesn't need to flank anymore. The only thing he needs to do is just guard his post, right? If he stays in this area over here, um, he's able to control the exit, right? If he's standing like over here and just holding the angle and like going back after, uh, after having contact, it's all fine. But if he just pushes full running like he did, look, look at the minimap. Just, just look at the minimap, how fast is he moving? He's making so much noise because he has so much confidence that they already won the round. And then he ends. You know? Like, this is the main reason why you will lose rounds like this. Because the person who should be giving you info that the team is going back is actually dead. So you have now no clue what's happening. Look at the minimap. Now, entire team of Furia is on C. And they have no clue if the players are going to go back. So... Mazin was pivotal. He was like an alarm bot that will alert them if the rotation is happening or just if they are boxed in. But they literally lost the rare guard, to say like that. And now, Derka just goes, yeah, I'm gonna go fast, go to A. And that triggers the rotation. The fact that Mazin died, pulled away the players from C towards A, Delke fakes the push onto A. He may even makes noise on short right now, which creates an event. You guys remember how I explained um, events? Like something that I really, really think a lot of you would not understand. Like there are three events here. One event, Mazin dying, which triggers a series of uh, thoughts for the, for the defenders. Like we lost our rear guard, so now we have to over-rotate, right? So Derka triggers now another rotation by going fast into short. So not only one player had to go back onto A side from C, but then they have to worry about B. So two players are over rotating. And when the, when the short steps are going to be spotted by the players that are standing on B on A, then there is a chance that the player on C is going to be impatient, and because of the event happening on short, he's going to start rotating as well, and he's going to get caught with his pants down because he has no, no imagination. And it's literally what happens. L look what's happening on the map right now. Decker going onto A side, and XQC, QC key. <laughs> I know, I know, it's a, it's a joke I make. He literally jumps down from platform without a gun just pay attention how he dies he was at platform and he's suddenly here that means look he's bunny hopping how on earth are you playing like this at tier one like this is something if i would be a coach i would be fuming this is such a ranked bad behavior it's actually unreal it's actually unreal how bad that is. And they go one by one. Look, why are you peeking here? There's absolutely no point. Imagine Khalil just dies here because he overpeaks. It's 2v3. It's fully winnable now, right? New Zera literally does a Mazin carbon copy right here. Literally carbon copy of new uh, of Mazin's behavior that killed Mazin at the beginning of the round, and this is the second person from Furia that dies with a fucking knife out. At you. Beautiful play by Chronicle. I'm sorry for that. Beautiful play by Chronicle. Because he taps the spike and he knows that Fury is going to be over aggressive because they now lost three players. So he goes for the flash because he knows they're going to be out CT and that enables him to get up into a fight and also enables Durka. It's really well done. Really well done. The second flash wasn't perfectly timed, but it's hard to time it perfectly. But if, he, if Durka waited for the second flash... Deke wouldn't even have, like... Deke would have had a free frag. Because if Chronicle flashes for him here, in this spot, 
it flashes this player and he gets an easy frag. But it, it's it's very hard to do it in that moment. This is a this is a problem right here for Fnatic. This wasn't well played because it's isolated fight, but the trade was almost too late. So it almost went down Khalil clutching it out because of a small misalignment in Fnatic. But in general, this round is like a ranked game. It's like an actual team, Fnatic, playing a ranked game and the ranked players getting outplayed by the most basic shit. And the most basic shit is just having good patience and understanding how over rotations are happening and how map control is being ruined by someone dying by running out. You know? It's like out of five players from Furia, two died with a knife out while running. Hey, it's Like, it's, it's actually crazy. Like, and. The thing is, you can say, oh, Fna Fnatic played so well, you know? And that is true. Chronicle and Durka played perfectly, almost, to the last moment, right? They made really good decision-making. But you cannot win a 2v5, even if you do everything perfectly, unless your opponents are literally throwing. And that happened here. Standard execute from, <laughs> okay, from uh, Fnatic on B-side with that Astro Smoke on top and the dash onto it. New Zera just get a kill with a Stinger from, I don't, was he full HP? I think he was damaged. Anyway. Uh, awful spacing, by the way, here. Really weird stuff. They're going two for flank and then they go one by one. This is also not well played because Leo should have been the first contact. If like this is also really, really badly played. Um, I just want you guys to learn, right? I'm not saying this to bash on players, but this is always incorrect. If after the tap, like you have one player here, one he play here, like you know that the spike is planted for the window, right? This is not planted for bottom right. This is planted for window and planted for box. Like, those are the two locations that players are going to peek out. And if the player is over here, that means that he needs to be out here to have a contact. So this person in window or in box is never contact because this player will never be fast enough to play off his contact. Which means that Leo needs to be the first person who peeks into the spike and then Alpha peeks out and trades, even though Alpha is lower HP than Leo. Because right now, when Alpha just wide swings, that wasn't a check. That was just a, that, that was just a wide swing. He knew he's committing. So there's also some... I think there's some miscommunication right here from Fnatic. Because... Wait, what? Have you seen this? This is not casing, this is this is an actual bullet. Riot fix! Literally unplayable. How do you shoot bullets if the bullet is falling out of the fucking gun? Um, so, uh, Alpha commits to a gunfight when Leo is not ready to trade him, and Leo is literally... Has, has to make noise, so New Zera knows where Leo is, and now this, is, this comes down to a 50-50 gunfight. I'm curious what you say after Fury CT side. Fury's comp is a nice chain, but the way too st stiff and Fnatic didn't respect this kind of utility too much, making it difficult. I mean, right now it's just Fury, uh, even though the I mean the utility is not mid maxed, and it's it's definitely not gonna be better for defense than attack. Like Harbor is really awful for defense. So this composition for Fury is actually better for attack than defense. This is another thing that I absolutely despise. 
Hey, look, there ain't any complaining. Look. As a Viper player, I never want to do this. I never want to put a Viper Spit on double doors. I never want to put a Viper Spit on short. I never want to put a Viper Spit on a long. Like those areas. Are, or, or I never want to put a Viper Wall on like a lobby. Those areas are low impact. Why they are low impact? Because there's always a way to go to the side that is behind you without, be, without being affected by the Viper Spit. Like what Fnatic literally has to do here is like, oh wait, yo guys, 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 yo, yo, Deca goes, there's a Viper Spit in fucking Double Doors. And Boaster goes, yo Deca, just don't go there, okay? It's like, okay, let's just avoid it. Okay, okay, fine, it's counted. Great. So they literally, the only thing that they have to do is just literally just not go double doors and just all go through long C or just go fuck it and we just go A. Right? And the Viper Spit has no effect. Now, if you would put the Viper Spit, for example, on here, right? Then you potentially stop the push for the entire C site because they cannot avoid it if they want to go onto C site. So, this is really well played by Fnatic, but saying, yeah, the don't go there. And also, why on earth is the harbor now doing the wall there? Like, it makes no sense, man. Why are you, like, they're, they're just going by defaults, you know? It's like, it seems like they, they, they don't have a lot of experience on this, on this composition. So, harbor goes, oh, it's that time. Standard wall that he does every single time. But it's not correct. Because there, there are changes in variables. And the variables right now is the ultimate from the Viper in double, double doors. So you don't need to do this. Because there's absolutely no need to do anything on double doors because it's being covered. Right? So he literally just threw the, 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 uh, the wall just to cover B-side when he could have used anything else for that B-side and keep that wall for retake or something. Right? This is standard execute from Fnatic on C. So we have um, we have Nanosom. This is something that DRX also uses. Nanosom on CT, uh, smoke on on double doors, and then then um, pull on platform if I'm not mistaken, and stun on default. And they cleared an entire seaside with the arrow, and now they're reheating, by the way. So they like made like a pause, and they're reheating. Because they knew that the site is clear. And the Viper is like, oh wait, but they... they this is cheating, man. This is cheating. They avoided my uh, ultimate... Wait, what happened here? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. There's, there's too much shit. Okay, so dashing on site, Durka fails to angle check, but he angle, he didn't angle check because the arrow checked it five seconds ago, but it's still a mistake. Now, they know about the sky being from CT because of the, the tiger. Now, there's a harbor ultimate for the retake. Sky flash didn't get anything. Interesting. Why didn't get anything? Where's the sky flash? Wait, I need to check this. What the hell happened with the sky flash? Now wait, it did go to Boaster. Never mind. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Okay, so now the stun on Dirk is from the ultimate. Boaster is fully flashed on logs. Three players going from CT. Viper is still in double dose. And the jet is just rotating, right? So now Dirk goes out of the range of the stun because he's faster than anything else in the game with the best weapon in the game, and he gets the last and he gets the kill with the last dagger. Holy shit! Right? So he gets that. He's in nano swarm. I didn't even see it thrown, but yeah, he's in nano swarm. He gets killed by. By Nanosom. Bolster is still <laughs> stunned in CT because he cannot avoid the Harbor, Harbor uh, ultimate because of the flash. 
and then the pull that debuffed the two players in CT, right? Because there's a pull being used by by Boaster in CT right here, gives the debuff, <laughs> and Leo gets a double kill with the debuff arrow. That kills your ultimate, though. This is really weird. Actually, no, it's fine. He was already in that position. He wasn't falling back. Okay. They, they, he assumed that it's gonna be planted already. That's why he went. Uh, that's why he went long. Sadek tweeted that whoever made this Fury comp on Haven is a genius and Brazilian Castle Red Lord are also gonna play the same comp when they play Haven. Guys, just remember, Viper was already used by many teams on Haven. Like, it really doesn't make much difference. That would, it, if, the, if you wanted to use Viper on Haven before, that was before nerfs, not now. Vofi, thank you so much for the seven months. Welcome back, brother. Thank you so much for the continuous support. I would still 100% with with Viper on Haven. I would 100% prefer to have Brimstone than Harbor for this map. You really don't fucking need Harbor. Brimstone is just so much better. Like he's gonna fill that role anyway. You're gonna have a secondary smoker. You can play the best smoker in the game that has useful utility in the game because he's supplemented by someone else with smokes as well. You know? Like, Harbour is just so one-dimensional, man. It's just like... Shock darts for clearing with double shock darts. Ah, no, no, wait. Recon arrow after that. Um, but I like the shock darts for B to clear the Kildra utility if necessary. It's a four stingers. Uh, this, this, look, 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 look. See this? Perfect example why this is a terrible, terrible smoke. You know? Because when the flash pops, Bosa is already on site. He is taking the space, and if the players oh, from really Fnatic would have had a better spacing, it would have been here as well. Them. So you can time this so much, so much better. And this this Viper smoke is essentially helping the attackers. I would never solo smoke with Viper on this map, but I always play her when I can when I can despite the nurse. And yeah, you cannot play Viper as a solo smoker on 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 Haven. It's impossible. Oh, Mazine. Mazine. Oh, the stinger just wasn't good enough there. And Leo's awareness is No, nah, dude. Great round from Fnatic. I love the Yo. We have a new sub, Remy Remyo Maman. <laughs> oh, my man. Thank you so much for the tier 1. Welcome to the family. This is a this is a big thing by the way because this is your first time sub ever on this channel, which I appreciate a lot. I would love to get to know you, so if you could introduce yourself to us, that would be absolutely splendid. If you don't want to, don't worry about it. The thing Harbour's viable on any map is just bad. No, guys, let me explain this way. Harbour is playable. And he has a role, right? And if you wonder what role is it, type an exclamation mark compendium. Listen to the videos explaining that shit, right? There's a controller explanation YouTube video here. And then I will explain every single thing about him. But the problem is, Harbour is just so one-dimensional and doesn't really have, like, 
any kind of flexibility in the way that he can his role can be played is easy to read because of that and also it's easy to fuck up his shit and his cove is useless like the moment teams are gonna realize that the cove if you have two players and they can shoot the cove instantly they will realize that the smoke literally disappears like that it takes six and seven bullets from two of the players from a vandal or a phantom to completely destroy the cove so imagine it this way if i'm a harbor and i'm using the cove to plant and there are two defenders that are gonna start shooting at the cove then harbor before he's even able to pull out his gun again that cove and the smoke will already disappear because it's gonna take less than a second for the defenders to destroy fully the cove and the cove just goes poof and there's nothing left Finger already started to get insta broken this tournament not on icebox I mean, so so well i can guarantee you that bosa didn't like couldn't like fully read what is happening on the map because he never played against harbo and viper at the same time but i can guarantee you that right now bosa knows every single bad thing that this harbo is doing by default with their utility after watching the vote review and he's like okay now we know what they exactly to do how to like use the weak points like how the double doors and b have gaps how the viper wall is also like put exactly the same way every single round like there's no flexibility here even though you play now viper and harbor at the same time so you should be fully flexible on defenders you would be you would be able to change your setups every round furia played nine rounds of defense and didn't change a single thing big fan of your analysis thank you remio you consider both a great igl yeah i think he has a great mind for the game both him and mini like look guys i always was saying this before i joined the rx right when i was in g2 i was literally saying that i absolutely hate the way that g2 is playing the game and i love how drx and fnatic are playing the game because how drx and fnatic are playing the game is literally the way that you should be playing valorant other teams are just playing ranked so if you are regrouping and allowing that control to work for example this cascade if, if mw is with teammates there they definitely can cut off and find boaster by himself three round lead for fnatic and it doesn't seem like there are any signs of slowing down. Yeah, they invested the Rolling Thunder previously. They still have Leo's ult. Wait, they're just walking up mid with another using utility. Oh my god, I couldn't have the belly. The sixth sense out from Fnatic to play away from the star for Fury is really impressive. Again, the same stuff by Hanbo. Watching up for the drone to get as much information. Does deny the information that QCK is in that corner. The Viper at least tries to use the smoke to his advantage this time. I wonder if they're gonna hit this B site. I wonder if they oh the wall went down. I wonder if they're worried about concerned about that pocket. Why why are you using this ultimate right here from Sky? Like this is literally look. Look look at this. This is oh my dude, I am so mad. I am guys, I know that this sounds like complaining, but this is really shit. Okay? Look, look what Sky does. Just look what Sky does. Pay attention. She pops the ultimate oh, the wall went down. and then goes into Tiger. Look! Why? You already did the ultimate! The Tiger is literally the ultimate, but one guy that is much slower, and this achieves the same shit but better. Like you just fucking spammed util without thinking. And you just use your utility you just use your ultimate, which is a fantastic tool for retaking 
for basic info that you would have gotten with just this tiger so you could save the ultimate. And even worse, it got no info because it literally just got destroyed through the wall. Fuck me, man. Look, zero info. Yo, Sky, what do you have left? Brah, I, I have two flashes. I don't have anything else. Did you use your flashes this round? No, I can guarantee you that the Sky didn't use a single flash for a full minute now. Let me check. Yeah, not a single flash being used this entire round, but he used the ultimate and the tiger. Imagine that instead of the tiger, even if you don't want to use the ultimate, even if you go, let me save the tiger, you could use the sky flash through that wall to get info if someone is in front of it. That turret is great, by the way, from attackers. It just literally clears left, right. Oh, Mazin backside. This is a really good position for Mazin. Never mind, Derka kills too. But it, 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 he, it, he shouldn't have gotten two. Like, Derka should have gotten here one, get killed by Mazin, and then Fnatic has a trade. But if you have a player like Derka, sometimes you don't have to even trade. So, <laughs> yeah, oh my. It is what it is. It is what it is. Like, look, look, look at this. Like, I, I know, this is again gonna sound like I'm fucking complaining, but this is just so awful. Two players coming in from the same angle, but the spacing between them is like an 18-wheeler on a fucking American highway. Not, like, not even close to each other. One goes through the smoke and the other one is like somewhere in the fucking desert. So it's a 3v5 retake attempt, but in reality it's 1v5. Like this guy just went in onto site when the other player wasn't even able to trade. And this guy in the window wasn't even peeking before. Yeah, but that sky utility made me really, really mad. What a nasty kill from the uh, command. What do you think of overall performance of Mahara Fuse? I'm rooting for them. I'm that this one is going to be tough versus Fnatic. Well, look, I feel like one of Thieves are, are like a team that can be on the level and of Fnatic and DRX in some time. But de definitely, uh, like, I was expecting them to be a little bit better in the teamwork department than they are currently. But it's uh, it's still very promising. Oof! Actually, that arrow is not bad. So the reason, uh, it, it could have been missed, but it's still like not terrible. And if it's not missed, and if it's done on purpose, then it has a purpose. So let me explain why do I think this arrow has purpose. It's very similar to the icebox, um, to the icebox um, arrow. So when you're going onto A side, right, you could put the arrow on the edge of the wall, or you could put the arrow here. So why are you putting the arrow here instead of the edge of the wall? Because if you put it on the ed edge of the wall, then a player from sight will destroy it and you will get absolutely zero info because, oh, there's a player sight. Yeah, thank you, Sova. But if you're putting the arrow over here, it's very hard to destroy it and you get guaranteed info about the, the early positions. So this is the same. You cannot destroy it from long, right? So if this gets destroyed, you have guaranteed info that there's a player in this cubby. That's, ab that's about it. First time heading back towards a it doesn't clear the, longs, the, the long, but they at least know they don't have to check it. But still, Boasted checks it. You can argue, maybe a mistake, but I would argue, good habit. Yes, <laughs> he still Boasted does. <laughs> That is 
is so fucking unfortunate. Like, he's not even fucking first contact, man. Like, look at this. This is so unlucky for Bolster. Like, you can't do shit. Like, look, Dirk has the wider angle. Those two people should be fighting. One of them dies, and then this guy trades. But Bolster is here. Dirk goes into the left. <laughs> it fucking posted the dice, man. It's so unfortunate, man. And the flash mitigates the danger, mitigates the damage, and it's hilarious and sad that Furia, the first engagement, the first engagement as a first duel. Yeah. Yeah. The first round he loses it in this entire. Wait. It's with Ops engagement, Digi Zing gets. It's hilarious. Gotta take one with him though. That that is that is kind of weird. I feel like the, the, there's some um, change of plans because Decker. I, I wouldn't say that Decker. Like this should never be a dash onto this because you can just updraft there, right? But he dashes onto it, so he doesn't have a dash. Oh wait, because he needs a double updraft here. Oh, I get it. Never mind. I'm not a jet main, so I need to. I needed to understand this. So he's gonna double updraft. That's why he was saving. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes a lot of fucking sense. It's fucking nuts. But why is he? Why is he swapping to Vandal? That's something I never understand. The cop has been spent broken by nice by Talon round eight killing stacks on top of the A side. I remember that, but that was still like it's it's not as fast as it, as it can be done. Maybe auto equip. Yeah, you're right. There is a, there is a sick irony in what you were mentioning there with DG Zen. You know, we we've had so much conversation around. How I don't think it's auto equip because he literally swapped here the gun. See. Like, he, he, he manually swaps the gun here. He gets the kill. Oh, wait, he's smoking. No, wait, he has Vandal before. See? He manually swaps the gun here. While jumping down. This is a manual swap. So, it's, I don't know. The, the firepower and the star power of DG's in, and it, it seems like... Shock, dude! Probably fought someone as close as he switched to the rifle, but there's no point. Because the ultimate from Jet is the best gun in the game. Why would you choose the inferior gun when you have the best gun in the game? And you can be faster when entering. You can jump up and be not at the headshot level that typically players will have. You know? It's like, there's no way that as a Jet player, you would, if you're thinking about it, there's no, there's no reason to change that. You know? Like, there's, there's no reason. What would you choose? Normal gun and peak like everyone else? Or you pick a better gun with no recoil and you can jump in, be faster, and not be spammed with a good crosser placement to your head. Right? If he misses, he dies. Well, I can guarantee you, if he misses the Vandal, he also dies. But there's less chance of missing with the knives. And also less chance of dying because you're in a completely unpredictable position and unpredictable speed. Now please stop, Hannah. There's there's no point in discussing this, okay? Thank you. Optimus Crime, my favorite name. Welcome back, brother. But why not Zotberg? Thank you, my friend. Welcome back. Thanks so much for the ongoing support. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Attica just had his number. And I love the insistence that went back over towards A here. It's this, guys. It's the same shit. With, like, with you see a jet main in a professional tier one team that has the ultimate out and then swaps to a fucking knife. Like, there's no reason. It's just bad habits. You know? Oh my god, this is the... yeah. 
Just mechanical outplay. can jump in all right let's see now attack for furia this is gonna be interesting because now this actually uh this actually makes a difference let's try to reproduce the viper wall they are doing okay so it goes from here. Wait, I need to recall the wall. It goes from here like this. This should be almost pixel perfect. So the reason why this is a nice wall over here, because look, when you activate the wall, you cannot stand in this corner. I would actually move it a little bit more to this side. So it's probably what fear does as well. Like, you cannot stand in here because you're being fully blinded. So you cannot hug the corner, right? So if you even angle it a little bit more... Wait, let me let me fix this. So I would do it from this angle and do it like this. I think this is good. Let me check if it's not... Might be too much space. It's too much space. It's not going to blind the player here. But he's affected by the DK... But he's not peeking out through the wall. Like, he, uh, uh, there's a small chance he's not going to be visible. So this is incorrect. So if you're a, a Viper, you can min-max this shit, right? So I'm standing here, somewhere around here, in this space. I'm looking into this direction. I do a lineup that goes like this. And essentially what this achieves, and now it creates... No? The other one was better? Well, you get my point. Like, the, the, the first one is actually the best, but it would still could be min-max to put it a little bit more on the right, because the person here cannot stand in the corner because he's affected by DK and by... Um, and is being blinded, right? And then it allows you to go onto the site without being spotted from CT. You can take the space on this side. What is very important is that you're able to check this left side without being... Um, absolutely like attacked from logs from ct from even backside because someone has to peek through it like there's there could be some there could be some space also used by the fact but um no nah, there's no way you're, you're peeking out we're gonna see how it looks exactly uh for furia when they start the round we're gonna pay paying attention if this is correctly correct because maybe, maybe there are some small things that they are using this 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 small shit could have been more here so maybe it is for furia because then it affects a player that is standing on the box like so you're always being affected um by the wall let's see how it looks in game That's a nice guy's cascade. I really like it to deny the early space. But then the jet, <laughs> the jet from attackers, is lurking. So <laughs> not a fan of that. And she burned the dash already. CT different lineup than what DRX and Fnatic are using. So how does this land? Oh, it's deeper into the site. Wait. I was Alpha getting a kill here? I, need to, I was paying attention to the lineup. Wait, one moment. Like, this is... I really hate this because this is a 5v5, but the reality is it's a 3v5. Because instead of using 5 or 4 players to go into site, you're using 3. You guys paying attention? Killjoy is dead because she's using a lineup. Jet is dead because she's somewhere out... nowhere to be seen. So you have only Viper, Sky, and Harbor who are able to execute the site, right? So now Sky is also dead because she's using utility. So it's literally just Viper doing an execute alone because of the spacing. Look, look. Also, this kill is fucking nuts, man. Good stun. But it's still like, there are no trades. This is literally just so disjointed. Oh, 
Imagine if there was a jet dashing onto that side. Well played. Nice double peek after the ping. I like that. But Bosta just got a big, big, big hit. And now this is this is this is something that you cannot blame anyone. I think both teams here, Furia and and Fnatic, are in such uncomfortable spot for both sides in those two v twos. You cannot blame any any kind of like decision making here from the team. It's just taking risks. But I do. I would say that what Furia has to do, the only rule that they have to follow now in this 2v2 is to always double swing. It doesn't matter which angle, but they should be always double swinging it. Well, it was single epic, so it is what it is. You could argue maybe that Durka should have waited for Boaster a little bit so they attack together, but yeah. How much has he struggled in these last few rounds have been quite the statement. Can't Chronicle flash through that box when they wall up? For which box? The green box on the backside? There's there's another upside of this wall, by the way. This counters most of the breach flashes. Breach would have to flash over this corner. And if he fucks up and it lands here, well then the breach flash has no no use. Viper default wall on C, okay. And, and, and this is something that I really dislike. <laughs> this is this is playing on autopilot right now for the attackers. Look, you have a harbor now in your team. This jet smoke is completely useless. Because harbor is using a cascade. And this is something that I really dislike. It's like People are doing shit out of habit. And they are don't, not taking into account the things that they changed. Right? So you're literally wasting a smoke here. Right? Oh wait, he dashed in. Okay, never mind. Well, I retract what I'm, what I'm saying. The cascade is a waste because Daxin just dashed into a, a long. And now that... Okay, but it's still a waste. It's just a waste of the cascade. Bosta gets bitten. <laughs> That's so fucking unfortunate, man. Bosta with Derke, I swear to God. I see in so many matches. I see in so many matches that a Bosta always is there to help Derke. And in many cases, Derke goes ninja smoke bomb poof and he's gone. And the Bosa just stays out in the open because he wants to help him, but Dirk is nowhere to be seen. And it's like Bosa dies so many times because he's a good teammate that wants to help, and Dirk just fucking abandons him. You know? It's like, uh, maybe it's gonna happen in the future in this match as well, but in the previous matches, I will kid you not, many people will say, yo, Bosa is shit, he dies so many times in those weird positions, man. Like, he's so shit. That's what people will say. And that's what you will hear on Reddit and see on Reddit and on Twitter. But the reality is that in many cases, Bosta dies in stupid positions because he wants to help Derke. And Derke is, is really not good at defensive positioning of himself. And he's being bailed out by the jet dash and the smokes a lot of times. And when that happens... Bosta tries to help him or someone else from the team and Bosta dies because Derka is panic smoking himself off because he's in a bad spot and Bosta still wants to help but then dies. You know? We're gonna see if it happens actually in this match. But it was happening in the matches in almost all the matches that I have seen before for Fnatic. Wasted dash? No, I, uh, guys, the Furia dash is not wasted because the smoke and the dash served, served a purpose to get early space on a lobby, but the cascade was a waste. Oops. Not the biggest of deals. They've got so much space. It doesn't even really matter. No, 
So is Delka doing a bad thing, or is it a, or is it a, or is it a, it is what it is in the situation? In this, uh, in this round, it is what it is. It's a low buy that will do just aggressive things and shit. But on defense, in full buy rounds, there's a lot of like bad plant by Furia. By the way, there's no absolutely no reason to plant it in that position. They know where he is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, ah, uh, this is very smart. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is this is very smart actually. So, you can literally see that QCK knows where the opponent is, but Nuzera is one of the ultimate. So, they give him the kill or the death, depending on if he wins or, or loses against this, uh, this player, right? And he gets the ultimate for round three. Huge, huge thing. The min-maxing of all prioritization is something that many teams still need to learn and think about in the game. This is very smart. And he gets it. That is something you rarely see teams have the time to do. No, oh, is he talking about that? Bala? I think he is. But that's one of the few times you see it come to fruition right there. When you have so much control, you can grab an extra orb. Yeah. And also target who you want to get the kill. Yeah. Take a look at that prime game of falls round one more time. This goes for Furia. This is a huge one. Full buy, small shields on all of the players from Fnatic. And it is a problem, by the way. That standing against um against a team with two with two characters that have mollies, and the singer becomes really, very really fucking deadly like against small shields. But all they're doing is denying that jump spot and making or making Alpier very, very uncomfortable. And they've swapped the sides where that Viper wall is. Surprised too that the star remained on T long, given that possibility of a scaling up behind the wall. No smoke, no gravity wall, no. Why we didn't see you in lock in? Because I wasn't high by right. Right didn't even contact. I mean, there's not, not a singular EU analyst, and I never did an international land before. I would love to be there. Maybe at some point. I'll just keep working hard in the EMEA. Uh what is happening here? There's there's abundance of utility here. Why on earth is this Viper smoke like this? I'm very confused. What what happened here? Did he just misplace his smoke? Is this a lineup? It is a lineup. Where from? Wait, I need to watch this. This is really weird. I think he butch butchered the lineup. There's no way you intentionally want this smoke to land like this. He he so. So the lineup is from here. Well, let me check it. He goes into this corner over here and throws the smoke on this space. Ooh. Once more. Wait, you don't even... Do you even need to run or do anything? Wait, let me check. Look, I already made this lineup 10 times better. I already made this lineup 10 times better by just doing this. Can I do it even better? Wait. Yeah, I just did this lineup 10 times better than, than Furia. This is much better for attack, and you don't even have to jump. Look at this. Completely blocks the vision. Like, what on earth are you doing now as a defender? You are fucked. This smoke is literally just there, and you cannot do anything about it. And instead, you have a smoke that doesn't really do much. Nice. Jump spot and making or making Alpier very, very they prefer more util over armor they were buying guns uh on the previous round as well like in this case you can see that only Bosa can buy full shields and there's no point for him buying full shields if he wants to be on the same economical level as the other teammates show this lineup again sure 
you stand on the top of the box here. On oh, no, sorry, on the top of the shelf. Look into this. Wait, no, 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 no. From this corner, right? From the vase. You stand on the vase and do it over here in this spot, like this. And this this lineup is fucking nasty. Completely blocks the defenders, allows you to leak onto side, and completely locks their vision from left and right. Like, this is a proper attacking smoke. And this is why those smokes are so important. Like, they put so much pressure on the defenders, right? See this shit? It's so hard. It's so hard to defend against this. I think it's just so they don't see mid, not to push with it. But you achieve the same shit, Portozinho. Like, one thing that people fail to realize is that you can be better with the things that you do and have multiple purpose with one piece of utility. And this smoke would not only stop a push out of mid, but also would stop the players from B-side of knowing what is happening on site. Right? But this is like, there's a gap on site, right? So they, they're gonna have to use other pieces of utility because this smoke literally ends over here. Yeah. They will get into it. There's no molly to delay. This isn't going further, but Alpier punishes. I don't know, man. This is like what? You've got Mazin who's lagging behind just a little bit. This, uh, yeah, yeah, the, you guys remember, the, the, this smoke is awful, by the way, but um, you guys remember how I was always explaining smokes? Astra is the only character in the game that can be excused for the bad smokes because she's rep repurposing the smoke that should have been a different thing. Like, this should have been a push, uh, sorry, a pull or a stun when the players are doing an execute, but because they swapped the plan, now this is a smoke, or both are just... Misfired. But he... Wait, he's playing... Further, but he popped it. Into it. There's, no There's an Anosome? There's a... Okay, I I'm actually not certain. I think he just popped it as a smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He popped it as a smoke because he wanted to peak double, though. So this is a del deliberate, deliberate decision, even though it's a bad smoke from Boaster. Because he wants to go into this position and fight. How does he get to here is actually unreal. Oof. I've heard before that lineups with the HUD is more reliable than with the crosser. What's your opinion since you have so many lineups? Uh, Mia, I actually think the other way around. Because there, there were already two situations in the game where the HUD gets fucked. And there's a small change in the HUD because the devs either changed something unintentionally, which is a bug, or they swapped something in the HUD on purpose. And it fucks up the lineups. With the crosser, you're never gonna fuck up your lineups because it's on the crosser. He tanked the Viper Molly. Yeah, right. He got to 130 damage. How do you do lineups that shows on the map? It's in a custom map. Viper wall on C. Wait, wait, wait. Full buy. No ultimates for attackers. And the cycle of the ultimates is not the best. Like, you will be able to... Okay, actually, it's not that bad. Like, New Zera and Mazin most likely are going to have ultimates in the same round, in, like, two rounds. Maybe three. Yeah, more likely three. 
if they played like if if none of them are popping off like not not new is if if Nuzera and Mazin are not getting like multiple kills then they're gonna line up in ultimates and like three rounds to have a full full attack. Let's let's pay attention for round nineteen. Let's see if that's gonna actually come to fruition. Oof. Yeah, and Deka Deka's bad positioning is getting punished right here. All right. He, he activated the dash, but he made noise before this cascade, so Mazzini was ready for him. And De but Deca gets punished. And no trades because of the cascade. So you're literally falling into your opponent's trap. Well played by Mazzini. Alright, let's see. Ayoto gets out of that! <laughs> Comes in, gives Digiton some safety. But so you can ask why is Bosa in this stupid position? By the way, I think there are two things happening here. One, because Delka dies in a terrible spot, Bosa now needs to get map control. Something that I explained to you in, in ranked a lot, right? When our, one of your defender ints, in this case this is Delka, someone else on the map from the defenders needs to take space to compensate for the last loss of the map control. That's why Bolster is going into the cubby. That, look, look at the decision making. He wasn't moving before Durka died. He swapped from his position to cubby because Durka died. So that's why Bolster is coming into this position. Now the second problem is, the second problem is they're playing on a LAN and I'm almost certain that Bolster peeks out of this position. You know why? Because the crowd goes, and Bosa is like, fuck me. They're just literally giving info that I'm here. So he peeks out. I'm almost certain that's what Bosa thought. I am almost certain that's what he thought. You can clip this and ship it to him and ask him if this is correct. Comes in, gives Digiton some safety. Can't get drone tagged here. But he's gonna oh, and that's and that's how Harbo can fuck over you. Look. Hey, Mizok. Look, this this Harbo high tide is really terrible now, and Chronicle just used it as an advantage. There's literally no smoke on Haven right now, on Heaven. He just gets a full full kill on Mazin, whose own smoke. He's not aware that there's a gap. See? And this is how this is why Harbor, even though flexible, can be really bad. Like uh, I go frame by frame. Wait, fuck me. Look. Look how big the gap is. Like, it literally gives a free kill. And it's so important that, that one round, just because of a bad smoke, you cannot, you almost cannot fuck the this, fuck this smoke up with any other character. Bad spot, the plant. Even worse now, even worse. Oh my god, he's so undecided. That's even worse plant. Oh my god. What pro players planting over here? <laughs> it's literally, there's, there's absolutely no reason to plant in that corner if you can plant over here. There's no reason. Okay, sorry, there's one reason, but it's, it, it doesn't matter in this case, because the players are not there. Because this plant is decent for if you have attackers in City or Haven. Hmm? Chronicles just tanking it. He had 69 HP noise. He got 15 damage from jumping down from heaven, bro! 
Goddess? Okay, guys, I don't think anyone realized that. But he would have literally been alive and get away from that molly after getting a half if he wouldn't take full damage. Look, look, he has 85. He's on heaven. He could have jumped down without taking full damage, right? He can jump on the boxes over here or the jump on the boxes in the corner. But he takes full damage right here from this position and he tanks to 69. So now he's being damaged by the molly. And he gets the half, but dies in in the space. Like, he can get out of this right now. And he is. If he would have that 15 HP that he didn't get, that, that he wouldn't get from the, from the full damage, he would have been alive here. Oh, God. Yeah, and now he's lost. I don't know that Leo can find a way oh my god, dude. So well by Furia. So well that is... QCK. That is so little, man. That is so little. We got ourselves a game. Yeah, that Molly lineup for Garden, who alpha? Did they combo push? No, Bosa was dead, so he couldn't. Let me check. Uh, alpha... Oh, he didn't have Molly. No, he didn't use a Molly. Not a lot of time left. I don't know that Leo can find a way in. So well played by Furia. Viper lineup? Well, why are we surprised that someone has Viper lineups? Is this why they planted there so the Viper can use the lineup? Guys, if you are a tier 1 pro player and you're playing a Viper, you have lineups for every spot on the map. There shouldn't be, please plant only in this spot because I don't have other lineups. Okay? Like, if you're a Viper main, in a tier one, in a tier one team, you have lineups for this position, for this position, for this position, for this position, in post plant, right? But you also have a lineup for this position, this position, this position, this position, and this position, and this position, because you need to be flexible if you're using the lineups for execute or using the lineups for post plants, like. If you're a tier 1 Viper player, there's zero excuse of not knowing lineups. For every single position, you know? And if you're doing an execute on C, you need lineups for this, 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 this. this. As a bare minimum. B and actually this as well. And yes, I agree, Internet Grandpa, you need to have lineups from several different positions. If you're, for example, if you're doing lineups for C -long, from C-Long, then you need lineups for all of those positions from here and also from here. So you are not, you're not like limited by the angle left or right. And you can do both from the same kind of... Um, from this from you can do the same lineups from different positions essentially so you'd not you don't have to cross different shit so why doesn't he know it no no we, we don't know that i'm just explaining to the chat that is that it's, it's not the reason that they planned in that spot because viper only has one lineup there i'm not saying that Guys, I'm not saying that he doesn't. Fuck me. I explained to the chat that as a tier 1 pro player, you need to know this shit. That's, those are the bare minimum expectations. Oh, and there are plenty of targets on the other side. This is where Durka was 
so good. But the dash is gone. You gotta be careful. He doesn't have the utility. But Durka misses. Inferior decide to rotate away. Two casket being used on A long. So Fnatic lost the control of A. But they don't have to worry about anything. Look, they have two players on A side and everything else in the map. Like there's one big problem that Furia has. And the reason for that is that they don't use any fucking mollies to break anything on the map. You know? Like the Kildrew... Kildra utility is not being destroyed by anything. If you don't have a Sova Shock Dart to destroy utility, then you should be using anything else to do the same shit. If I'm a Viper or a, or a Killjoy, I'm using this lineup that lands over here with a Molly for either Killjoy or Viper to make sure that I can break an Alamo bot that is in this spot. And one of the main reasons why Furia, I think, failed at attacking on this side, the side of the map, is because they didn't break any of the kills or utility, I think, the entire game. And because of that, Fnatic doesn't have to rotate at all. Look, pull, nano some combo, so Jet is isolated. And this is such a bad... Bad timing from Furia. That Viper wall literally just got turned off. So it's a really, really bad timing, like, coordination. Because, look, it's for such a long time up, it just turns off in the worst possible moment when they do an actual execute. And Alpha still gets fucked. That's so unfortunate. Ah, but that's the bolster. But why is... Why is Diggs in... Ah, he doesn't know about it. But, ah, he's... No, he's stunned. He's stunned. That's why he cannot kill him. Oh my god. That is such a nasty stun by Chronicle. If Chronicle doesn't stun Jet, Bolster gets one and dies. Look. Stun happens now. Daxing gets stunned, and Bolster gets one, and if Jet is not stunned, he gets traded. But instead, this stun allows him to get a free K. Viper Molly can break Kirjo Util too. Every piece of utility that deals damage can break um can break any other piece of utility that has HP. That was the change in patch 5.03. I think. And he just can't. They swap Viper Wall for a Harbor Wall. But that's the main reason why you want to use those two walls on the map is to have better control and checking angles. Like, there's no other purpose for that. Because it doesn't stop the defenders from having info for C long. What happens with that wall is it allows you to check left side of the site without being exposed to the right side. It's not the top team right now. They're always a top team. Different, different Viper wall, by the way. Hmm. <laughs> well, from my understanding, this Viper wall, this Viper wall, main purpose is to block off the vision from main. Right? And he wants to save his orb, but he also didn't buy the orb. <laughs> even though he has cash. Uh, so that's kind of awkward. 
I, I think the Viper Wall only means is to just block literally the vision for the orb. So you can take the take the ultimate orb. And then maybe he wanted to block the vision on the Killjoy turret. That's why he pointed that as well, because the Killjoy turret in the past round was in this spot. But it was literally very deep. So he either, either Alpha repositioned it. No, the wall is right now. So I think I think it doesn't even cover the Kilja turret. Uh, but yeah. I like the harbor wall. I like the harbor wall because it achieves two things that the cascade was doing on long. And this is literally a better cascade right now. It's a little bit slower in execution because it has to go up like this and then it takes time to go up, right? Instead of the cascade, like immediately, almost blocking every single piece of of vision from by going like in a in a you know, like step by step, like a tsunami wave. But I like this more than the cascade if you would be playing this by default, because it blocks both short and long. Love this high tide giving essentially what you would use a cloud burst or a cipher cage or an. So they got the orb for Kalilo. No, wait, on, on Viper. So he has the ultimate. Cascade to block the window. But the cascade is actually pretty bad. Look, look, look at the cascade. It got stopped too early. You seen this? The cascade got stopped too early. But that's just unfortunate, I guess. Oh my god. Yeah, Alpha overheated. Viper, uh, Alpha overheated 100%. He should have waited for the rest of the team and just tuck it in the corner. Well, they will most likely win now because of the orb that they got at the beginning of the round for, for that Viper's bit. I think they won, right? Good flash by New Zera. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah, dude. I mean, well played by Furia. That's actually well played by Furia. So, I still think that the the uh, uh, Viper should have bought the orb, but getting the or the Viper orb, right? But the wall was being used to get the ultimate orb, and now they crafted that into a round win because Fnatic just kind of didn't control double doors. Let me just check it because this this has to be a misplay here by Fnatic. Like Kirjo is playing alone on C, so no one covers double doors. So I don't like this because Kirjo is playing in a spot where she cannot get out of the site. She is literally just like so. I what I don't yeah I think this is a this is a misplay. In position, in defensive positioning by Fnatic, because the thing is, if you're playing like this and you have majority of your forces com like f concentrated on those angles, right? Then the Killjoy is in a no man's land. Like all of this can be taken by the opponents before the Killjoy reacts, right? So what happens is, if the opponents by any chance go into uh, go into double doors, right? And the Alamobot alerts the Killjoy. Well, the problem is that the Killjoy cannot reposition. That means that the players are already trickling in onto the side from two directions. And the Killjoy has to get two kills to be worth. Going one for one is not good for the defenders. Because attackers are, have always an advantage in case the numbers are even. And because they can concentrate forces together, right? And the Killjoy cannot reposition towards backside or CT when Double Doors is compromised and they are pushing out in multiple directions. So if you want to fix this, if you want to fix this with this kind of positioning, the Killjoy should be playing from CT or from window and play retake on C essentially 
And it would still be, and by the way, it would still be rectified if Alpha wouldn't have peaked. You know? If, if Alpha just stays hidden in that spot, he would rectify his bad position. I'm genuinely curious because I heard a lot of people making fun of, IG, of his IGLing. People who are making fun of Boaster's IGLing are cretins. He's one of the smartest people in Valorant scene. A decision to be made right now on whether to drop the off to somebody else, use the knives, or allow another weapon purchase. Light armor across the board. Oh, different Viper wall to block off. Uh, that doesn't achieve anything because Kildra Alamo would literally nullify this Viper Wall. Like, literally, Fnatic doesn't have to change anything in the defenses because the Alamo bot nullifies the standard position of the Alamo bot, nullifies the Viper Wall. So, the Viper Wall has no function over here till that Alamo bot is not destroyed, and the only function of the Viper Wall right now is activated on the ceiling. And that's about it. Four different Viper Walls. I didn't quite get the last one that was used on the seaside. But this one in Garage gives a lot Shock of space to take Garage, break the facility. Gold deal. Wait, tier two. Gold deal with the tier two super fast train. Thank you so much for the 57 months. Good morning, my friend. Welcome back. So much time to pivot though, but yeah. with this reckoning and the seekers coming out, they might just hit. Hey, look at these He's already all the way up. The Rolling Thunder's gonna Oh my back. god, dude, Leo got fucked by that. Yo, didn't I exactly talk about that? Yeah, dude, it's deja vu. When I was doing the VOD review of Fnatic versus Sentinels, literally the same shit happened. Right? Boaster was standing on short and he got fucked by the salad going like this. You guys remember that? The Viper Wall blocks Garage Window too. Yeah, it doesn't... Look, I just literally just explained that. It doesn't matter if it blocks the Garage Window if the bot is not destroyed. You don't have to get control of Garage Window when the bot is not destroyed. Oh, he hit Boaster. Oh my god, stun on stun. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they are so fucked. That, that was just a cluster fuck. That, that was it. That, that, there's, there's not much like critical, uh, sorry, strategical thinking. It's just like, oh my god, dude, it's Overwatch. You know? Viper wall, and you see Alpha here just repositioned the turret to make sure it was on their on the opposite side of the wall. I'm really curious about what the decision is at the beginning. Eh? On the opposite, same Viper one. <laughs> did Habo fuck up his cascade? I think he did. Same Viper wall, and you see Alpha here just repositioned the turret to make sure it was on their on the opposite. Well, side not exactly. I think he did it on purpose, actually. I'm really I think he did this on purpose. I don't know. Yeah, he had to because it's angled in a different way. So he did it in, in a kind of way of like, yo, know, I want this to be a jet smoke, but it's, he kind of stopped it too early as well. So he, you know, I, I think I know what he wanted to achieve. So what he wanted to achieve is, um, I'll show you, because he stopped the cascade. He did it from here and he stopped the cascade like this, right? So it blocks the vision from long, 
but doesn't really give you much. You, you don't know if someone popped on short. But what I think he wanted to achieve is stop the cascade like this. So it creates a pocket to go outside over here without being spotted and also blocks the line for short. And I think he just stopped it too early. That is my assumption because that will be the min-max position of the cascade. You know? And that would have been pretty fucking good and smart, but it, now it looks like, oh my god, he fucked up. Is the wave same distance always? Or if you leave it, the cascade goes into maximum distance, but you can stop it early by pressing the button a second time. What, what do you think Riot can do about the stun? People get a lot of value even when stunned. So I think... The characters that are focused on stunning people, like Breach, should have a different effect. So you can keep the stun unified for the other utilities. Because I don't think stun should be uniformly stronger. I don't mind the stun being a little bit weaker like it is right now, when you stun someone with a tiger from Sky, when you stun someone with the Harbor Ultimate, when you stun someone with, uh, uh, with, the, with the Astra uh, stun. I don't mind the stun being a little bit weaker like it is right now. But for characters, that full identity revolves around stunning people and like displacing them, which is Breach. I think Breach should have a rework of the effect so he can have his own effect designed differently than the other stunts in the game. Because it's a massive feels bad moment when you stun someone with your main utility like the ultimate or the default uh, default fault line and those motherfuckers are one tapping you with a vandal like nothing happened so i think breach should have a differently named similar effect that is stronger than a normal stun so it doesn't doesn't buff the stuns from the other characters Yeah, Neon Stun should stay the same way as well. Like, it shouldn't, it, sh it shouldn't be buffed, in my opinion. I guess it's a high elo thing, because we get to see more players in that elo killing while stunned. I don't know, man. I honestly don't know, but I think it's the, the effect is too weak for Breach. See? This this wall? Oh wait, no. Kildra is dead. Never mind. Now the wall serves a purpose because the culture is dead. Okay, so he has info about the player on site. Yeah, this is a massive overheat problem with Durka. There's absolutely no reason to do this. To do this. Like, there's zero reasons to do that. You already missed your shot. They're ready for you there. You updrafting there puts you in a really terrible spot. And you could have waited for the rest of the team and try doing a retake fully. Is it a land thing, the stun being weak? No, no, no. It's online the same shit, man. How many kills did I got when, when stunned? Or how many kills... I How many deaths did I get because someone else was stunned? And I was like, fuck me, man. That's unlucky. Oh, this is the Derka push, but he just fully ignored it. See, that's the thing. Uh, but that comes in from um, a place... Uh, so, I blame Boaster here. <laughs> I blame Bo Boaster here because I don't expect Derka to be flexible in that kind of thinking. You know? Like, this is the standard play that they have. It's like they stun into this area... Boaster uses stars on A main. Arrow lands over here. 
on on a, a garden and Delka just fucking pushes with the dash into the window. But the thing is, Bosa didn't take into account that there might be a counter to this by using the cascade. I think Mazin didn't actually think it through. Like he just accidentally counted this. And now they are in a position when it's a 50-50, right? But I can't remember what happened here exactly. What's the outcome? So I'm going to be very curious because this is like really weird now. <laughs> okay. Well, Mazin just kind of forgot that he's going to get stunned in that position. But the thing is, like, if you're VOD reviewing Fnatic, you're going to know that one of the rounds on defense are going to be exactly this. And it's a very highly likely round on a lower buy because they are more risky in decision making when that is happening. So this could have been predicted. And I feel like if Mazin just stays in window, if he stays in the window... He gets the kill on Delka most likely. But he went into the stun. So he pays the price. But then Delka still gets traded. So even if it goes one for one and Delka dies there, then it's not positive for the defense. And that's a trade you take any day of the week if you're Furia. Uh, the side was like, hmm, 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 hmm. And this way, no, this way, this way, no, this way. There's been instances where I think Dijazin has overheated in moments like this, but look at it right now. Also, again, my same fucking critique as always. Why on earth are you using the ultimate and the tiger at the same fucking time? It's literally pointless. Look, he popped the ult, goes into Tiger. Why? You don't need to. Did you watch the game yesterday? I had it on my TV, but I, you know, with, with children at home, it's not going to be fully focused. To know faster where people are, maybe? No. You already know where they are. Because of the ultimate. And the tiger is just like... It, it's pointless. On a tag, you can argue, well... What if they shoot... <laughs> what if they shoot the fucking salads, you know? Um... So there's a little bit more reasoning to use it on attack than defense, but we have seen the same shit by the same player on defense. Those are just exit kills. Ah, Alpha was a little bit late on that trade, man. If if he would have a better timing, there could have been a very positive defense. What happened to Tens? What do you mean? Uh, oh, first time I see Khalil using a nano swarm for B control. Fortunately for Fnatic, they repositioned Alpha to A. <laughs> so there's no alarm about on B. But it's the first time I actually see a, 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 I see a nano swarm being used there. See? It's literally... Guys, funny, funny thing. You guys remember who made a lineup exactly for the same fucking spot? It's literally the same spot. Actually, it's not. Because I, I was pointing into here, I think. But yeah. And allows them to break that utility. You're right though, Alpha swaps. Yeah, it wasn't uh it's a more aimed to the left. So it's more purpose for a alarm bot that is on the left. He's been I thought Tens was the best player. Ooh. Well there you go, combo. Now you know they don't know much about the game. Concerned though, he's giving him 
giving himself no room to actually work with his teammates while he's waiting for that. I'm not sure if you guys remember. If, if you guys are a long time viewer of me, if you guys w would be watching the vote reviews like that I did a year and a half ago, maybe even two years ago, um, people were asking me, what is your opinion on Tens, man? And I was saying, well, he has a very good aim, but he has a really bad decision making and he's getting bailed out because he plays Jet, which is broken because that was before the nerf, and Reyna, who can bail out him from bad decision making because he gets kills with his insane aim. Mechanically speaking, he's one of the best players on the planet, but it doesn't matter when you're playing tier 1 and your decision making is lacking. You know? Full retake on this. Hits coming in. There's going to be a dart. Can confirm I was there two years ago. <laughs> Not sure if trolling, but I, that's literally what I was saying. I, re I vividly remember me doing a vote review of Sentinels playing Icebox. And people were going like, oh my god, Tense is the best player on the planet. And I was just watching this and I'm like... The decision making is awful. It's just abusing the really broken mechanics in the game. You know? And, and it's like... In the meantime, you have really smart players like Leo, who have fantastic positioning and great game sense, but they are worse on aiming than tens, and people value tens more than a player like Leo, for example. You know? What is broke? What is what is awful about using what broken is in the meta? I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I don't mind people using broken shit. You should be abusing broken shit. It's the same stuff in, for example, card games. If you are a competitive player in any card game, you're using the most broken deck that at the moment is being in the meta game. If you can play a deck that is better than any other deck in the meta game, you play that deck at a tournament, right? And it's the same shit in Valorant. Jet was broken, you play Jet. Chamber was broken, you play Chamber. But that's not the point. The point is, if you don't have the broken shit anymore, your flaws are being put on the pedestal and suddenly you're not good anymore because your other fundamentals are lacking. Who is Leo? Literally the player that we are just watching. Here, right here, on Sova. I was... Look, when I was casting EMEA, uh, and Leo was in guild, I was like, fuck me, Leo is so fucking good. He's just a, such a smart player, man. Such a smart player. And uh, to back up of what, what I'm saying, I put Leo as the best free agent before franchising... Sorry, not franchising. Before the partnership system. When Tombiz sent me a survey of my best free agents to look for, I put Leo at the fucking top. Higher than Nats. Higher than Chronicle. Because Leo, in my book, is one of the most stellar, consistent, and smart player in the game. And I would rather have five Leos on the team, or maybe four Leos and one IGL, than anyone else. You know, it's like consistency and teamwork is just so much more important than just like the flashy fucking plays with Jet. Has anyone played Yoru so far? Uh, yeah, there was one Yoru in this tournament by Ethan on Pearl. And it wasn't bad. 
it was actually pretty decent for like the euros that we have seen in the vct the euro was decent not fantastic but decent two euros what was the second euro all oh, right oh yeah I, I forgot about the turkish euro and you should too um Hear the rumors about Ye? Guys, I, uh, fuck me. Look, even if the rumors are true, I can I can tell you from um, a a perspective of a person that was both a pro player and was a high level executive at an esports organization. When I was at CGO at G two, those kind of rumors are one of the main reasons why. There's bad blood between players and organizations and viewers and organizations. Because that shit should always be closed. Be, be, sorry, so, so should be solved behind closed doors before it gets out. And it's perfect example with Shazam. Shazam got to know that he's not on the team from a fucking leaker that does it for impressions. There's no other reason to post that shit other than farming impressions for yourself and be a cloud fucking chaser. Okay? No other reason. You're not doing this for the fans because you are literally damaging the player and the organization at the same time. And what is even worse, when a new lineup gets released, right? The organization makes a new lineup of players and someone leaks that lineup before it gets officially announced, the organization always loses on the most hype moment. I can guarantee you that when I was G2, I tried selling sponsorship slots with our sales team for announcement videos because they are the most hype when a new team gets released. Unfortunately, you cannot do that shit because no one gives a fuck about the talent announcement on a roster when it's already being known for two fucking weeks because some moron leaked it. So yeah. He could be in danger here if Digizen switches sides. There's no alarm bot here. Remember they swapped. Oh my, oh my goodness. Gosh, you pushed Khalil, but Khalil was there to save the day. With the cover. Digizen was the dead man walking there. It, 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 it also doesn't qualify as journalism. You're just being a, an asshole. On B side is clear. 56 seconds still to work with. Spike not even picked up. Khalil has all. Digison is not done with this site yet. Where do they go? Over towards C right The bar for journalism is very low these days. I don't think it's a bar for journalism. I think it's just misusing the name journalist. A journalist in esports is Richard Lewis, for example. That's an actual journalist. Yeah, this bad smoke by Bosa, by the way, is unfortunately made on purpose, and they use it kinda to their own advantage. Wait, what? Also, I like the fact how Habo had to use the wall on double doors, even though they have the Viper. <laughs> it's a 3v3v4. Three three Why is Boast in that spot? Why is he spamming the gun? Wait, what? He fully spammed his gun into the boxes. Oh my, well, sometimes you can say that someone fucked up, and that's the moment when Bosa literally knew he fucked up. He spammed the entire clip on the boxes when someone was planting. Smoke is on purpose to hide from garage? Yeah, that's what I explained when Bosa was playing Seaside. But it's in a bad position 
because it also serves a secondary purpose as Astra can use it as a smoke, uh, sorry, as a pole or a stun. But it's not a good smoke for defenders and in any way. No, no, it wasn't accidental. He had zero bullets, Mr. Bala. But you cannot see that when you're casting, so no blame. Like, I would I would assume, if I would be casting that game, I would literally assume the same thing as Bala. Oh, he he just accidentally pressed the, the, the reload. But the reality was that he spammed 30 bullets into a wall, into that box, for no reason there. Oh, there's gonna be a viper, viper pit. All right. Who, who is? No wait, Harbor has. Okay, well maybe you'll go for the Harbor. No wait, they already had it. But why is the ult like this, brother? And now it's plan. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not terrible. I just don't like it because it's not min maxed. Like they can go out of CT without being spotted, right? Like how? Like this is this is a big problem. How on earth are you going out like this and not looking right? Like look at this. The point is that viper spit is literally helping you. That's why I was so cringing because. If the Viper's Pit is being used like in this position, then you can clear all of the, this before going onto site. That's why I was cringing that this is not min-maxed, and I was like happy to see that the uh, Harbor was using shit to block CT. But it's like Alpha is completely just unaware that he can now check fully right side, and that's a big problem in in, in like a lot of situations, you know. Isn't it an org's responsibility to avoid leaks? Don't say, like, dude, you know who is leaking the announcements? Players or friends of the players. And orgs cannot do anything. What they will do? Put it in the contract that if you leak the con if you leak the announcement. If if any if the announcement is leaked, we're gonna not sign you guys anymore. There's nothing you can do as an org. You know how those people know that uh, uh, that most of the fucking rumors in Valorant are being started because someone has someone in the friend list and he sees that he's scrimming with other people. You know. Find the players, but then the players will be but we did nothing wrong. It's not our fault. We didn't leak it. You cannot find the leak unless you literally will ask the guy who then made the official fucking journalistic post on Twitter with five words in it and leak the leak the uh, leak the source and you tell him, well, you tell us now who told you this shit. And he's gonna be like, well, this fucking random person with 50 fucking followers on Twitter that is friends with one of your players. I work for a company that sues employees if they leak something. They have ways of knowing a whole department dedicated to it. Yes, but there's a different dynamic. In a normal company, let's say you're an IT company and you have your programmers, right? That are writing some shit and they leak it. And they are being fired from the job because they broke the NDA of their contract and shit. Then you find another programmer, not a problem. 
because those people are never face of the organization and you have millions of people, quote unquote, that can take their place. In sports, you are hiring specific players as either stars or people who are great at the job in specific things. So your dynamic between the organization and the players is different because you need to keep your fucking players happy. If you start a team and the first thing you do is you find your players because the announcement gets leaked, then you can already fire the entire squad and make a new one because you're not going to have a successful team if your players will be antagonized towards your organization from first day at their job. The first thing that players should do is never scrim on their accounts. That's it. Again, it seems like the defensive struggles. You know? The fuck? What happened here? I'll be honest with you, I think the quality of the plays uh after the after the regulation time went out of the window. Like both teams were so just so tired. And it's more prone to making like stupid mistakes and overpeaks because it's just so exhausting and IGLs are like mentally fucked after like such long overtime games but what, what, what? yeah there's like no reason for, for shit like this there's like literally no reason for doing stuff like this you know The public nature of this definitely makes the things a lot different. Yeah, I mean, in normal companies, punishing employees for leaking shit is a normal stuff. But unfortunately, not in entertainment business. Imagine, imagine, for example, you are, um, let's say you are, um, a good example. Let's say you are making a movie and it's going to be Iron Man 3. And you put in a contract for Robert Downey Jr. that if he leaks shit, he's gonna get fired. What we what do you think is gonna happen? Robert Downey Jr. might out of spite leak shit, right? And then say fire me. <laughs> and the producers will be like, well, what the fuck? What do we do now? Iron Man 3 already exists? Yeah, to prove a point. Because you have the context of real life. Man, I hope that white noise is loud enough. Fanatic call a timeout here. And by the way, Marvel is pretty fucking good at not leaking stuff of, of their movies, by the way. Like, I don't think that anyone knew that Iron Man is going to die in Infinity War. Leaks are just part of this industry and orcs often coordinate the release of leaks than the big journalists get. That is literally not true. I worked personally with one tier one organization for eight years, but I also was speaking to other top executives in every other EU organization, specifically in LEC as well. Like, I knew every single owner and executive in every single European organization in LEC, and not a single one of them would coordinate leaks with journalists. This is just a bullshit that someone tries to spew. Facing 
Spoiler, guys, Avengers Wars, uh, uh, Infinity War was released, what, 10 years ago? You should have watched it at this point. It's not my fault, you guys don't know. I can guarantee it happens. How can you guarantee it happens? Are you working in the industry? Are you... Do you work in an esports organization? Are they gonna expose the smoke from Viper? Look at the mini map. Alpha can single handedly keep him back. Wait. It's Furia and Attack, what I'm talking about. Yo, it's so funny that Furia literally used the same orb on attack and defense. <laughs> it's it's literally the same. Very close connection to the large esports journalist outlet. Oh, okay, buddy. He still has his dash too. He's trying to stick for more. Woo! And he's gone. So you're neither working with esports org and you're not working at a journalist uh, uh, company. You're just friends with someone who works in the. Okay. We saw what just happened. Derka looks like he wants to go hunting even more. But Trust me, bro. Big mistake by Bosa here. Wait, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, this is this is kind of awkward. Like it's five before. Why are you peeking there for no reason? Yeah, that's that's no explanation here. They, they were just like literally holding it with two people, and then Bosa just goes alone. <laughs> Big mistake, my friend. Yeah, this is this is kind of awful. That spread from Furia is so solid. Knowing the breach is a play. MW as well. While all that's happening, while they get themselves. It's not even a crazy claim. I'm confused why you're so against the idea idea of orcs controlling leaks. Look, what I'm explaining to you is that not a single organization wants to control the leaks to be timed. If they ever do something like that, it's because they know they cannot stop it. But they're not doing it for their benefit. Because they would never like their shit being licked. Okay? Can you explain the wall, please? Why well, it's not closer to the wall? Can defenders just push in for a sun cure or something? Uh, the attackers see Viper Wall? I explained that when Furia was attacking. You can rewatch the VOD. Free to free. Did the crowd just fuck over DG Zine? Because you guys remember how I uh, tweeted yesterday that that the same position was fucked because of the crowd? It might be just an accident, but I, I mean, Leo is a, has good fundamental knowledge, so he's gonna check the fucking corner, so, yeah. Yeah, I, that's that's what I mean, Coffee Cup. He would have checked it anyway, but it's just funny, you know, because yesterday, yesterday, literally this killed a player in that position. <laughs> they have white noise. The white noise doesn't do shit against 2,000 people yelling. <laughs> It's it, at this point you can't even like analyze this. This is just random shit happening, you know. You underestimate white noise, brother, my dude. I played on LAN 
with white noise and thousands of people in the audience. You will hear the audience. Even if the, you can ask the CS players who not only have in-ear monitors, noise-canceling mon uh, noise headphones with white noise, and they're sitting in soundproof booths, they will still hear the audience. Okay? You underestimate the fucking loudness of thousands of people. Just tell the audience to be quiet. Yeah, easy thing. Even when the C even when they have so much utility blocking on C, the Viper Orb, the KJ util, it has still been a focus point for Did they not use active noise cancelling headphones? It really doesn't change anything. Like it's not magic. You you how 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 an active noise cancellation works is you guys have to understand one thing. A speaker, like, you could actually use, you could actually use um, a speaker as a microphone because it's the same type of, type of device. Like, your headphone is literally a microphone. It can be reversed. You can literally speak to this and, it, and you can use it as a microphone. It's going to be a bad microphone, but it's going to work this way, okay? So noise, active noise cancellation works in a way where the headphones are picking up the sound from the uh, outside, from the outside environment, and they're using a counter to the same wavelength and apply it as a silence to the wavelengths that you hear in a specific like form. But there's absolutely zero chance because it's right now in current technology, physically impossible to drain out perfectly uh, it out. It's just not physically possible with current technology to make that possible because the loud, the, the, the loudness of the crowd is so fucking huge. You would have to block out every single sound and then you will not hear anything else. Okay? And you have... There's so many shit happening that you cannot predict because the environment is not the same. It's not controlled. What you, what you guys want to have is a studio-controlled environment that has the same kind of variables every time and then you can silence out the shit that you don't want to have but only because you have a controlled environment. So the only way of fixing this shit would have had, would have required an entire team of programmers and audio engineers analyze the arena, use, um, use sample size of actual human beings in the arena, calculate the most common sounds that are coming out of that arena, use that as an algorithm, and then use that as an active noise cancellation. That is not possible. You know? Let's see what Fnatic calls out of this too. I think things have calmed down for them. They know the situation in the, that they're in, but now that I say that, Boser again and Durka did try to overcook in that mid round. goes down and we get right back into the action what about using a glass box for the players doesn't change a lot still gonna hear the crowd remember he has not really found much success on defense with the op we've seen this harbor wall so many yeah what abraxas said is correct it seems like they're gonna avoid it if you're ever gonna see any organization leak anything to a journalist is because it's already being leaked and that journalist will release it anyway. 
So they just do damage control. Oof, it's just like, this is like this is not uh, see this is this is a round where Fnatic doesn't do anything to destroy anything of the killer ut uh, utility for 40 seconds, so they go into a stack. There's not much to analyze here uh, 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 about this round apart from the fact that Fnatic didn't do anything to do to destroy Alamobot and kill turret, and because of that, they go into a four player stack on C side. When one player was controlling A side early, look, one player is posted on A short, controls the entire A side, and there's an entire fucking army waiting on C because Fnatic just failed to do anything about the map control. And, you know, it's late into the game, it's 27 fucking rounds, and I don't blame them for making mistakes because they were doing it properly in the earlier stages of the game. But it goes longer and longer, the more prone to mistakes and doing basic shit fails. in a row advantage fury in this overtime it's just a ridiculous stat the first series for them we're stops and just this map is more than entire series combined i have to question why fanatic even went for it, just pushing through that sp smoke and all the utility that was there why did they not re hey, arrow Alpha playing A. I like the fact that Fnatic is changing. Like, look, with with Furia, I I might have missed like round, one round. But if I'm not mistaken, Furia didn't change their defensive setup even once. It was literally the same shit every round. Well, with Fnatic, they're changing Alpha between A and C a lot. Wow. Okay, that's a free kill. Oh my god, dude. And they didn't use any utility on window, by the way. This is just like, okay, let's just fucking push it. Fuck me, man. Big mistake by Fury, but not controlling mid. Oh, first time I see this most standard Viper wall, by the way, used on the attack on A. Could have been done a little bit better, in my opinion, but, like, using it more in here, it's better for CT, but creates a small pocket over here, but that pocket can be abused. By the attackers, I mean. Yo, but plant... In, uh, I don't know what's going on with the pro teams, but like literally only DRX and Fnatic are planting in the best possible spot. Everyone else is just like, whatever, man. Like everyone else, literally every single other team apart from DRX and Fnatic is planting incorrectly. Like it's crazy, man. Every other team is planting here while Fnatic and DRX are planting here. Hey, chillin' fun. The Vandal works too. Oh, as we dance again. What a way to start this series. And a flawless fashion at that. That round. Yeah, I mean, the initial pick, the initial stomp out from Fnatic, yeah. it continues to work. This time, they wait until... I love this. They get the stun off perfect. I mean, how do they even know? I guess that's where Mazin's throwing his utility from. But then there's the grab well as well that's on top and queued off of the trailblazer. Yep. The shock dart. I mean, the, 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 you, 
No time, didn't need space in the 5v2. No, I'm just saying in overall, like this entire match. And also all the VOD reviews. Like I see that that team's just not planting in the best spot for A, even though they can. Different Astro smoke this time, so Deck smokes for himself. So this is like the typical B push. And now Deck is in the in the back, in the most crucial position, but he's like the, the post plant positioning of B is so fucked. It's like so tough to play on this on this side in post plant. So typically you will just see that players just leave the side, you know? Because it's almost impossible to hold it because of the multiple angles that are happening when a retake is happening. Like it's just chaos. It's just it, 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 you cannot almost you cannot almost limit it. So it will require just too many smokes and like um, on on point, um, not on point, quick thinking on the feet. You know when you're doing the retake. So it's very tough to play uh, in a post plant on the site. That's why when you play ranked, please for the love of God, avoid planting on B. No one trades. Jet and Harbor are just like absent. L look at the minimap. They get it up. L look, look, look at the positioning. This is so un uncoordinated. Look. Why is the one player peeking and the other players are just doing nothing? See this? Like no utility was being used. The 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 sky just peaks for no reason. And they and and the harbor has full utility. So the hub could have used something to block B because the point is, the point is, I'm going to show you something. Um, the point is that this guy wants to peek while someone else has to cover the entrance over here. But the thing, the thing is that they could just smoke. Wait, he used the cascade. Wait, 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 wait. This is not visible on the minimap, but it's visible here on, on the gameplay. Look. Where did he use the cascade? Wait, let me check. Now, now he's using the cascade. So why on earth is he looking into the cascade? This is just so badly played. Look, from this position, he's using the cascade. Oh, shit, my bad. From this position, he's using the cascade. And the cascade goes into this direction and it stops here. So why on earth is he looking into that direction instead of helping this, this sky? This is, this is like really bad. Let's pay attention to the game now. Look. See the cascade over here? Look. So he limits the positions on his left. You can literally see the cascade right here. It's very faint. It's in this position right here. This would allow him to be with Sky and Trader because he, they are not worried about the B main peak. But instead, they're just doing nothing. And three players from one angle just lose one player because no one trades. Like, this is really awful. Yeah, this is really uncoordinated. But again, I would say it's the, it's the exhaustion just coming in. Aggressive push by Derka on C long, just falling back. Hey, he hid from that aftershock. Oh my god, he's fucked. I really love the fact that they just went back. Insta went back. I love it. It's it's such a basic move, but you can see many players would overheat in that position. They would just like, fuck, fuck, we got a kill. Let's go. And they would push and die. And then it would be awful. But they actually went back. And this is super, super important because they get one for zero and they build up at an advantage. Um, Matsi, yo, 
Yo, Lotta, today is Agatha's birthday. Can you sing Stolat? Stolat, Stolat, Nam. Hey! Hope you like that. Happy birthday, Agatha. I'm not sure if you're in the chat, though. Um, Matsi, thank you for the prime. Almost two years, by the way. Breach stunned the harbor and jet so they couldn't trade? No, he did not. The stun literally appears after the sky is dead. Look, the fight starts before the stun even goes in. Like this is just bad explanation. This is just like trying to find excuses for sh for really shit uh, spacing between players, you know. Wait, what? What happened here? How are they losing this one? I, that's that's what I'm really interested in. Yeah. So close. Yeah, he lands the shots onto Durka. Don't forget the flank and spawn too. MW trying to Man, this is also really badly played by Fnatic. Like they even smoked short. Like they smoke short and Durka goes one by one here. Like I really don't like this. Like I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I I understand that Boaster was watching long. Right? Boss is like watching long here, or is just waiting for someone maybe who to peek from that from the smoke. But the thing is, like, you are at numbers advantage, and no one would blame you if you both just go forward because of the smoke, right? And you just try to get the trades. And you can even stand without peeking, so you can like stand Ah fuck me. It's such a tough decision, actually. I, I'm not sure. But the thing is. Would you blame the let's let's assume that Boaster stands in a different position. Let's assume that Boaster stands in here and he waits for Derka to check this and then he trades him. But instead of someone being in this spot, someone just peeks out of the smoke in the back and kills them. Would you say, oh my god, they fucked up? And I am not certain actually to how to assess it. And also it's overtime. It's so hard to make like a like a you know like is that badly played? Is that not badly played? It is very hard to to make this decision in the heat of the moment when you play the game. You know? You're left in this 1v3 and Fury are not done yet. But still, it feels bad for a team every time. Someone solo peaks and not gets traded. Like, it's it's always like, it feels like, oh, fuck me, that's a huge mistake. If you had two players in a similar spot and you didn't trade, then it really feels that you threw. You know? Sounds like a trolley problem. Mm. I don't know. It's just from 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 a I would say from a coaching perspective. If you can trade, and if you can have spacing to trade, you should do that. Okay, I found a solution. Right, I, I am a little bit tired as well, but I found a solution. So what's the solution to that problem? But again, remember, this is overtime. They're fucking tired as hell, and Bose is IGLing the entire fucking team and micromanaging shit, right? But the solution for this is different position from Boaster. So look, let's assume Deke will do the same play, and he's gonna solo peek this, right? So how do you fix this? You fix this by putting Boaster um, here. You fix this by putting Boaster in this position over here, looking at short, 
while Durka smokes this, he has a smoke by the way, smokes this and solo peeks here. And if he dies, then the insta trade happens from Bosta. That would be the correct play. But it's so hard in overtime, in the 30th fucking round, to think about everything like this. But that would have been the play. Sometimes got punished on down deep a long. Those aren't coming right now. The high tide delays long enough though for three players to get here and look, Ditches in finally taking more space with his eyes. Michael. I'm just gonna say this one thing. I was making a very deliberate uh, like explanation on why orgs don't like leaks. You said as a counter argument. That it's not true because leaks coordinate with, uh, sorry, orgs coordinate with the journalists and give them the leaks. And you're like trying to make a point about something that is not entirely true. It's like lying by omission. The thing is that the orgs will only control something that is already leaked, but they would never fucking leak in the first place. So what you're saying is completely invalid because it doesn't make any sense. Orgs never want that to happen in the first place. No org is going to work with a leaker to leak the fucking stuff from them in the first place. They're being blackmailed. I'm done with this conversation. Yeah, there's just so much info gathered here. And because of that, they can send three towards A. The high tide getting back up anytime soon. That could put the pocket up. TK in a big spot here. Oh my gosh, he gets it through the spot. Yeah, there's, there's like no follow-up by Fnatic here. Wait, wait, what's happening here? Why are the other players not even close? They actually... You know what's funny? Is that this harbor wall literally helps the attackers right now. This harbor wall literally is something that the attacker would do. You cannot fight from CT now and help the Viper. So this is something that the attacker would actually benefit from if they want to go out of short. So yeah, this is... Uh, this. Oh wait, did Ballad talk about that? I think he did, right? Yeah, yeah, he did. It's, it's very nice for Bala to like notice that those small things that are not easy to... By the way, this is fucking nuts. The, the fact that he dodged this trap is insane, but let me finish my thought. It's really nice of Bala noticing those small things because that's not something that every single castle would realize. But the thing is, like this, I was certain that he's gonna fuck it up. Like, this smoke right here, I'm like, oh, fu he fucked it up. Because it covers the entire entrance. But it actually doesn't get him because he crouched. He crouched while jumping, so his legs are not in the fucking smoke. I would assume so, or that not visible enough. But the thing is, if you want to counter a trap like this, by the way, you put the smoke in a different spot. So look, I'm gonna show you how to do it properly. In case you want to, you're in. If you're in in, in any game, if you're in a position like this, and you see the alarm bot here, and you want to dodge it, right? You have to put the smoke, the center of the smoke, over here. Like this. So it ends like this, and you have a passage over here. If you're gonna do it too much to the right, it's gonna end up like here. When he got just lucky. You know? By the precise by the precise jump. He does have a smoke. He doesn't have a Oh my oh gosh! gosh. Played hopscotch around it. Do you expect this? The turret man. <laughs> You cannot, like, Alpha, Alpha just literally puts the turret there, but he just swings, like, there's, there's no way, there's no way, you cannot stop this, like, it's, it was just well played, really well played by DGZ in. How do you say his name? Timing gorgeous from DGZ in. 2v2 here, Ops still in play. Time, a factor. Khalil's 
got to find space. He's got to find space. Or DG Zen just gets to kill a 1v1 here. DG Zen? Okay. Jesus Christ. I'm a factor. What happened here? He's got to find space. He's got to find space. Good trade by Sentinel. Uh, by Sentinel. By... Oh my god, dude. This is like a, such a 50-50, man. But it's a good trade by Chronicle here. Like, it's instant. Like, he cannot even react. Wait. I'm a factor. Khalil's gotta find space. He, got, he got the dash. Look at this. He gets the dash and he insta-activates it. Look. He insta-activated the dash and he's not able to use it. Now, if this would be the old jet, this guy would have been alive. He should have put, put the turret on top. Oh yeah, right. Alpha. I mean, but again, quick thinking and like being in this position. I, 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 but I, no, 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 no. He didn't want, okay. So there's no way he was going to put it on top. Alpha could have put it on top of the, on top of the, 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 the box here. Sure. And counter the potential push, but he, he is never going to do that because there's no smoke for heaven. So he doesn't want to be in a position to be killed from heaven because if you would have gone here and put the turret on the top then he is there's a small chance that he dies from heaven and fucks up the entire post plant so he is doing this just to make sure that this trap because he he knows that someone can avoid this trap and he's like multi-purposing it here because it's both for sight and long but there's no way that he's putting it on top here We've seen this so many times. This time it looks like Fury wants to punish. I mean, Down grass. you expect it here, right? The orb as well. There we go. Yeah, that orb is really bad. You guys remember? Here, right? Look, see? Such a small min-max thing, right? Such a small min-maxing thing. When it comes to the orb placement. If someone wasn't here when I was explaining it, let me do it again. Oh, shit. Right. I will show you again. But the thing is... This, this is a lineup that the Furia doesn't have min-maxed, and it would have made a huge difference. If this smoke lands and covers this area, it makes the defense way harder. Like, way, way, way harder. Because splitting the side in half when it comes to the entrance, right here on the minimap, makes it almost impossible for the defenders to hold with one person. So you have to sacrifice more players. And it's just like the it's just Furia not min-maxing it, you know? And it, it and it's and it's an easy fix. But it's it's the prep phase that was like not good enough for Furia to have this min-maxed, you know? If you didn't see it before, that's what I I'm gonna show you what I mean. Because it's just you can just literally just do it without jumping. And Kildre almost had the same lineup, you know? So, um, whoop. you stand on the vase and you look here. Whoop. And now the same smoke is 10 times better. And that's it. And that's how big of a difference one meter makes. You know? The orb as well. There we go. That's the start you need if you want on this. Sadak said teams were copying the heaven comp from scrims without understanding why. Well, the same shit was happening with Fnatic. When when Fracture was released. Which team was that? Uh, was Zeke playing in a different team after Ascend? Or was that a send? I can remember, but I remember it was a team with Zeke. Because I think it was Zeke playing Viper. Bad plan, by the way. Uh, anyway, the point is, like, I'm actually going to show it to you. Um, because it's, 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 it's kind of funny. Uh, you, you've seen this on Breeze, on Pell, on fucking uh, Fracture. Like, uh, Fnatic was using a Viper wall... Um, Viper wall on arcade as an attacker 
So essentially, essentially, uh, the Viper Wall for the attack was like this. Uh, sorry, for the defense um, was like this. No, wait, what am I talking about? Um, this, for the attack, was like this, right? This was the attacking wall. So it essentially allows you to use this to go for arcade, be undetected from sight, and be undetected from tower, and leak into different positions. So you can go through here, you can go through here, and you're always covered from the other angles, right? And then you go into sight, and the long B push is covered from sight because of the Viper wall over here. And this is a pure attacking wall. And then you see someone else and different team copy it and use it on defense. You know, it's like this shit is happening so often. And at, at the tier one level, there's no excuses for that. You know, there's absolutely no excuses for that. I remember, like, vividly talking about that during the Red Bull tournament in London. Um, because I was literally <laughs> explaining this to Yinsu. And I was like, look, this is Bose's wall that he was, he was using in the first time Fracture for Fnatic. And now this team is using it on the incorrect side of the map. And she was like, oh, shit, let me ask Bosta. And she did. And he was like, yeah, it's funny as fuck. Can, can get peaks from Canteen Gen, though, right? But here? If you're going into Arcade, you are not seen from Canteen. If you go here, you are not seen from Tower. So you always limit the amount of angles that you attack through. That's the entire point. You cannot draw in an official match. Oh, wait! The harbor actually fixed the wall a little bit. It's actually in front of the site, and it's almost in line in double doors. This is the first time this is actually done more correctly than it was in the past. I mean, if the first wall wasn't enough to deal with, the second. Well, now it's a combo of Viper and Cascade. The Viper was a little bit too early, but. Or was it meant to be together? Uh, no one knows. Yeah, but it's like... Haba is just so useless when <laughs> on defense is actually kind of crazy. Oh my god. Alpha just single-handedly sleeve like fucks over the entire defense, man. Fuck me, man. And now... Leo just needs to be smart and not peek. Oh. Well played by Khalil. Yeah, but it's like, how can you expect anywhere to be there? Like, there's, there's no way you can read any positions over here. You're fucked. But oh, although, using the Nanosom... They're gonna peek you anyway. Like... Even if there's a Nanosome, they're gonna double PQ anyway. They're gonna ignore the Nanosome damage and just go through it. You know, it's not a Brimstone Molly, it's not a Phoenix Molly. You know? That Sky Peak was so bad there. I mean, in, in general, all of that shit when it comes to the flanks from Furia was really not well played. This one is not that, uh, like. <laughs> Yeah, it is horrible. No, no, there's, no, there's no explanation. It is horrible. But that's like still not as bad as what Mazin did in Uzera in round five. <laughs> it's usually down B, down C. There's a lot there as well. Oh, is there a lot there? We have seen this before. Going way forward. Just reckless. So confident. And it just ah! won the fast forward, but he flashed. DG's in finds two. <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah. 
Buster whiffed so much there? Yeah, it's easy to whiff when you're blind, man. He didn't see jack shit. Then Chronicle just wins the fucking game by being aware of this one player, man. Yeah, this this like decision making that they're, they're doing in this overtime, it's like you cannot blame them for this doing this shit. They're just fucking tired, man. They're gonna be like, fuck it, let's send it, man. They just fucking send it. That's what they did this round. And it's like, well, okay, we didn't do this before. All right, let's do this, you know? And this ultimate just literally stops the plant, but I do like waiting for Alpha and just using it for retake. This is so much better. And now, yeah, the drone is going to clear the first angle. Now he's known. Now those people are just fucked. Arrow to clear as well. Full swing. A little bit disjointed, but that's it. It's really well done. And everyone goes, boo, boo fuckers. And Bosa goes, ah, thanks, man. <laughs> oh, like, many people would go to the crowd, right? But Bosa goes, it's the same shit. But he's, he's not offensive. <laughs> oh. I mean, the, the overtime rounds were not pretty. Uh, but in general, it was a very nice match to watch. Um, there was a lot of shit, a lot of uh, really bad decision making and really good decision making. And it's a, you could, I would say that a ranked player, by listening to this vote of you, could learn a lot of shit of what not to do or what to do in his own games. You know? Even though it's like a. It's a professional game where compositions matter and so on. There's still a lot of stuff that you can apply to your own gameplay.